Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video today. In today's video, we'll be showing you how you can create a hoarder server. Now you're probably like, what am I hoarding in this case? Um, so in this case, um, it'll be links and kind of like bookmarks um, that you can save. Um, it's kind of more of a like um, link warden, so similar to that where uh, you can essentially save all your links that you want to review later or bookmark it essentially. So. Um, the cool thing about this, and I haven't actually played around with this, is there is actually an AI integration where you can um, input your a uh, open AI key in there and use it to kind of get stats and other things. So I won't be doing that in this video, but if you do have an open AI account and you want to put your API key, um, there are some AI, cool AI things that you could do with this. So, um, but let's get started. All right, so what we'll do is set up the DNS. So get all the prereqs that we need to essentially be able to set up our automate the um, creation of our server. So first thing is got to be resolvable by DNS. So let's create another one. <clears throat> Hoarder in a and 172.16.108. We're getting we're getting close to uh, adding adding a lot more servers. Um, it's definitely been a fun adventure so far with all these different services that I've created and played around with, honestly. Um, hopefully you guys do enjoy what what I've shown and have implemented some of these in your own home lab too. Um, the other thing we'll have to do is update our inventory in Ansible to be able to run our playbooks against it too. So, hoarder. We'll add this in here. Add hoarder. And that should be essentially it for our GitLab related stuff. Um, nothing else we need to work on here. Um, so we can go to our template and our workflow. Um, and in case you're new, and this is one of your first videos that you're watching on my YouTube channel, uh, I have a few playlists and you want to look at my automation series playlist to look in depth on what these playbooks do um, because they're pretty cool and they're actually pretty simple. There isn't, isn't too many you know, configurations or whatnot. Um, but in, in a general gist, we'll be using this workflow that will create a new VM on VMware, patch the virtual machine, install Docker and Docker Compose, because most of my videos, um, I find solutions that are pretty easy with a Docker image, um, and then creating a cert on our local Step CA server, and then setting that up with Nginx, so I essentially have full TLS on my own home lab. Um, so that's, that's a lot of fun, honestly. Um, so, hoarder. Um, the IP was 108. Um, we'll just name it Dragon Hoarder just so I can easily differentiate. And then the proxy address. So we will look up Hoarder self hosted here and look at their documentation. Um, so pretty much, you know, self hostable bookmark, everything, app, links, notes, images. Um, and the AI is automatic tagging and full text search, which is pretty cool. So uh, that must be the open AI part of this. So, but if you scroll down, you can kind of see a general gist of it. And then they have documentation for installation. So let's go there. So we're gonna grab the Docker, Confo Docker Compose. Um, populate a few things, and if we, yeah, and here's the open AI part. Um, okay, localhost 3000. Um, so, <clears throat> we'll proxy it, localhost 3000, and we should be set. So we hit next here, launch. So this will take a few minutes, as I said, so um, creates the VM in about like a minute, patches it, installs Docker and Docker Compose, creates a certificate, and sets up Nginx. Um, so, We'll fast forward the video once this is done and finish the rest of the setup. All right, now that the VM has finished creating, we should be able to SSH into hoarder.dragon.local. We'll enter the password here and we are logged in. So obviously the prereq here for this, because it's using Docker Compose, is you will need Docker and Docker Compose installed. So that's part of my playbook. That will that does the installation. So, if you're looking for how to do that, um, feel free to check out my automation on uh, playlist series for the Docker and Docker Compose, uh, which is pretty simple um, with what I'm running. So, as you can see, there's only like four tasks. It's really not that 
um, difficult. So um, if you're looking for that specific configuration, go check out that video. Um, but to continue on with this, we will grab the Docker Compose file. So um, I also need to install wget because I know that that's not installed. I usually try to use a minimal image and not have anything installed if I don't need it. Um, so it's not bloated, so we'll grab that. So we can cat the Docker Compose file um, and look at it. So obviously if we had the open API key, open AI key, we'd do it here, but we're not going to, but looking at the rest of it, it's pretty simple. Um, and we're going to just use the latest release, 3000. Um, there was a few things that it did say. Um, so it's going to require a .env file, it looks like. Um, so let's look at the documentation. So .env, um, so this is like doc composes environment variables that you can populate so you don't populate in here and you can use it. Um, essentially, it's like a parameters file, essentially. So let's create this real quick and paste that. So from this, um, we're going to change a few things. So we know... Um, Order.dragon.local um, is going to be the actual address that we will use because we have that. So, and then we need two random strings, it looks like. Um, so let's remove from that real quick. And yeah, okay. So open SSL, the random. Yeah, this, this is how I would generate a random string too. Um, you could Google how to do it or use Bitwarden um, or Vault Warden to, to do it too, but we're going to just use this real quick. Um, because this is pretty simple. So we'll populate this random string um, env, and we'll put it here oh. at the end of this. Oh, there we go. And then we'll generate another random string and we'll put it at the end of the other one. and paste that. Oh, I did the same thing. All right. So now we got the two random strings. We got the address. Oh, um, and this won't be uh, 3000. It'll just be HTTPS due to how we proxy. We'll save that. Um, and let's look at the configuration here if there's anything else. Um, for the most part, it doesn't look like there is anything. Um, and we'll just do it all compose up and detach. So docker compose up hyphen detach so it'll pull the four or five containers that it has in the docker compose file um, and start running it once it is ready so um, this should probably just take a few seconds most of these don't look that big it's just pulling a lot of images so we'll give it a few seconds here um, but let's see let's take a look at the rest of this so if you want to update you can update the hoarder version um, but I'm not seeing anything else that looks like configuration is needed. So um, that seems pretty simple. So we see everything is running now. Uh, we got all the things up, up a few seconds. So I think everything should be pretty healthy. So let's do HTTPS hoarder.dragon.local. Um, so there is a sign up slash sign in. Um, let's take a look real quick if there was a default user. Doesn't look like it. So well, let's go with uh, the sign up here. So dragon, dragon, dragon dot local and a password. We'll sign up. And here we go. This is what we got here. So obviously the first thing that we'll try to do is do dock mode because everyone likes dock mode so much better. It's so much easier on the eyes. And then I have like these two like huge lights shining in my face. Um, yeah, it, it's definitely easier for the eyes. But it is pretty simple. Um, obviously you got your, you can paste an image, write a note or drag or drop an image. So for example, if you were to go to YouTube and look up the lovely Sash Drew, aka me. We can bookmark my videos channel um, in here and save that. So you can see it will populate with YouTube here. We got 
um, an image will eventually populate here, which is kind of cool because like some of the stuff that has it just only has like the link and you have to kind of think about it. Um, so that, you know, pretty simple bookmarking, not, not too, uh, not too, uh, difficult. Um, you can do tags, you can create tags or even write notes in regards to it. You can favorite, archive it, or delete it. So now you can see that my lovely face on here. Um, there's actually even a few, a little bit of data. So it has my uh, tag here, how many subscribers and videos I have, 160. I can't believe it's almost been like a whole year since I've, I've done this and I have 160 videos. Um, but you can see it will populate some data too for you. Um, screenshot would be interesting. Oh, it even gives you a screenshot of what the page would look like. Um, so that's cool. That is really cool actually. Um, so there are obviously a few good things in here. It also has a search so you can search for, you know, something. So I search YouTube, you get YouTube. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a pretty, you know, basic, basic link, um, bookmark. But, you know, there's a lot of cool features that you might not see um, in, in other ones. So you can get the grid layout or the list layout. Um, but it's pretty simple. Copy and paste um, or drop an image here and it will link it so that you can save it for later. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.